In this video, I will show you how to restrict SSL VPN users by geography or by using public IP addresses. We are going to restrict SSL VPN connectivity from certain countries. By default, SSL VPN is accessible to all public IP addresses from the internet. Let's begin. For this demo, we are using this FortiGate 60F running on 40OS version 7.4.3 which is currently the latest release during the time of this recording. The first step is to create a network address. Go to Policy and Objects, Addresses. We will create a network address using either the public IP addresses or by using geography or country. Afterwards, we will use these network addresses to whitelist or allow access through SSL VPN. Tick Create New. I'll show you first how to create a geography address. For this demo, we will use USA so we will give a name of USA to make it simple. You can change the network address logo color if you want. I usually change the color for me to easily locate the address and also for my reference. For the interface, leave it to any. For the type, change it to geography. For the country, you can scroll down or you can simply search for the country. Tick on it to select. Comments is optional. Click OK to save the changes. You can see the newly created network address named USA. Notice the logo color is green. This is because we changed the color earlier. Next is we are going to create an address group. Tick on the address group. Tick create new. We will give a name of allowed public SSL VPN. You can enter your preferred name. Type is group. We can change also the icon color. For the members, we will add the geography address we just created which is USA. You can scroll down or simply use the search option. You can add multiple addresses to this group. Comments is optional. Click OK to save the changes. You can see the newly created address group and the members which is USA. We can also add public IP addresses. Assuming the SSL VPN user is using a fixed public IP address. Go back to address. Tick create new. We can enter a subnet or range. For this demo, we will use range. We will give a name of public IP range Japan, assuming the SSL VPN user is accessing from Japan. For the interface, leave it to any. For the type, you can use subnet if you want. Since we are going to enter range or public IP addresses then we will choose IP range. Now, enter the IP address range or subnet if you choose subnet. Comments is optional. You can put something for your reference. Again, we can change the icon color. Click OK to save the changes. You can see the newly created address. Now, go back to address group. We will add the newly created IP range to the allowed public SSL VPN group. Simply double click on it. For the members, click on it to add more members. We will add the IP range address we just created. Click OK to apply the changes. We have now two members of the group. Next is we will modify the SSL VPN settings. I did a very basic SSL VPN configuration prior to this video. If you haven't yet configured the SSL VPN then you can check my other video or check the link on the description below. Scroll down and look for Restrict Access. By default, it's set to allow access from any host. This means, by default, anyone from any country can access SSL VPN as long as they have the SSL VPN details like the public IP address, SSL VPN port, etc. Now, take limit access to specific host. Tick the plus sign. Do not add using the network addresses. We need to add the address group. Choose the address group we just created which is the allowed public SSL VPN. You can hover your cursor over it to view the members. Tick on it to add. Now, remove the default address which is all. We will only allow this group to access SSL VPN. This means, that only USA country or USA IP addresses and this Japan range of IP addresses can SSL VPN to this device. The rest will be blocked. Click apply to save the changes. 
The next step is we're going to create a service port using the port number we configured for the SSL VPN which in my case is 10443. Go to Policy and Objects. Services. By default, there's no service configured for this port, so we need to create a new one. Click Create New. We can give the name of SSL VPN port to make it simple. Comment is optional. We can also change the icon color. If you are not sure about the category then leave it to default which is uncategorized. For the protocol type, leave it to default. For the address, leave it to default which is IP range. The destination port is TCP and enter the SSL VPN listening port which in my case is 10443. Click OK to apply the changes. You can see the newly created entry. It has a different color because we changed the icon color earlier. The next step is we are going to create a local in policy. If you notice, local in policy is not available by default. We need to activate local in policy in order to view the current settings. Go to System. Feature Visibility. Under Additional Features, look for Local in Policy. It's disabled by default so we need to tick on it to activate. Click Apply to save the changes. Let's go back to Policy and Objects. We can now see the Local in Policy. We can view all the current settings. If you notice, we don't have any option to create new policy. We need to do it using the CLI or command line interface. At the top, we can see the CLI console. Tick on it to open. Enter the command config firewall local in policy, hit enter. We are now on local in policy. Enter the command show to view the current configuration. By default, there's no default policy configured. We need to create a new policy for the SSL VPN restrictions. Enter the command edit followed by the policy ID. The policy ID will follow the sequence. We can start from 0 or 1. New entry 1 added. We are now on policy 1. Enter the command set then question mark to view the options available. First is we are going to set the interface. This is the incoming interface which is the internet facing interface or the WAN port. If we check the interfaces, in my case it's the WAN 1. You can also enter the command set and then question mark to view the options. Enter the WAN port, in my case it's WAN 1, hit enter. Next is we are going to set the source address. This will be the SSL VPN remote user address. It's the same process, we can enter a question mark to view the options available. Again, we are not going to use the address, instead we are going to use the address group. We can simply copy and paste the address group or we can enter the first few letters of the address group and then hit the tab on your keyboard to autocomplete the address group name. Hit enter. We can enter the command show to view the current configuration. Next is we are going to set the destination address. We can simply put all. We can configure the restrictions on the firewall policy. Set action, we can either accept or deny the traffic. Since this policy is to whitelist or allow the address group we created then we will choose accept. Hit enter. Next is we are going to set the service. Enter the command set service followed by the SSL VPN listening port. Earlier, we created this service for the SSL VPN listening port. We can enter the first letters of the service then hit the tab on your keyboard to auto complete the service name. Hit enter. Next is we are going to set the schedule. We can set it to always, this means anytime. You can create a time schedule if you want. You can check my other video for the scheduling. We can enter again the command show to view the current configuration. This is policy ID 1. For this policy, SSL VPN traffic is coming from WAN 1 which is the internet facing interface. And it only allows the address group allowed public SSL VPN which is the USA and Japan range of IP addresses to connect through SSL VPN. They can access all or anything. The traffic will be accepted using the SSL VPN port. The SSL VPN address group can connect to the SSL VPN anytime. No scheduling. Some other default configurations are not shown here. To view the full configuration, Enter the command show full then hit enter. Here, you can see the full configuration. Again, 
This is policy ID number 1. The next process is we are going to block the rest of the traffic from other countries or IP addresses. Enter the command next. We just exited policy ID 1 and now we are back to local in policy again. Enter the command edit followed by the policy ID. Again, we need to follow the sequence so we can enter a number that is above 1. We cannot use 1 again, or else it will override the policy 1 configuration. A new entry has been added. We are now under policy ID 2. It would be the same process, we just modify some of the entries. Set interface, add the interface facing interface or the WAN port. Set source address, since we add and allow the address group in the first policy then we will block the rest so we will choose all. Set destination address, we will set it to all. Set service, we will add the SSL VPN port which we added earlier. Set action deny, this will deny or block the traffic. Set schedule to always, means anytime. Set status enable. Show full to view the full configuration. This policy means, incoming SSL VPN traffic through the WAN port which in my case is the WAN 1 from any country or any public IP address trying to connect to this network will be denied or will be blocked. This is applicable anytime, with no scheduling. Enter the command next to go back to the local in policy. Enter the command show full to view the local in policy full configuration. You can see that we have two policies which is the policy ID 1 and 2. The traffic will follow the sequence. The SSL VPN traffic from the WAN port will first pass through the first policy which we allowed or whitelisted the USA and Japan range of public IP addresses. Now, if the firewall receives SSL VPN traffic from any public IP address that is not in the allowed public SSL VPN group then it will pass through policy ID 2 which we set the firewall to deny or block the traffic. In short, only the country and public IP addresses on the allowed public SSL VPN group can connect to this network. The rest will be blocked. But what if an SSL VPN user from another country wants to connect to SSL VPN? or some of the employees traveled abroad, or let's say they went to Singapore and want to use SSL VPN? Singapore is not in the allowed group so they cannot connect to SSL VPN. The solution is very simple. That's the main reason why we use the address group, not the network address. Whatever country or public IP address you want to add, you can simply add it on this group. No need to modify the local and policy and SSL VPN settings. It's very simple and easy. Now, let's create address for Singapore then we will add it on this group. Go to address. Create new, let's give a name of Singapore for our reference. Again, we can change the icon color. For the interface, leave it to any. For the type, change it to geography. For the country, you can scroll down or use the search option. Simply search for the country you want to add, in my case it's Singapore. Click OK to save the changes. You can see the newly created address. Now, go to the address group. Double click on the allowed public SSL VPN. Under members, click on the plus sign. You can scroll down or search for the country you want to add, in my case it's Singapore. Tick on it to add. Click OK to save the changes. Again, we use the group to configure the local in policy and also the SSL VPN settings so no need to change any other settings. You can add more countries, range of public IP addresses, and IP subnet on this group depends on your preference. To remove a member, simply double click on the address group. Tick on the X sign to remove. Tick OK to save the changes. Again, even if we remove some countries or address on the group. No need to modify the local in policy or SSL VPN settings. It will all rely on this address group. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you like this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.